recognize this song? Of course you do, it's a freaking classic. But did you know that that iconic instrumental is actually a sample from a Bollywood movie? Britney's producers used two different sections of the soundtrack. <laughs> and combine them to make that iconic string melody. Samples aren't the only Indian influence on Toxic. Britney also sings microtones. <laughs> microtones are the notes in between semitones. These are very rarely used in pop music, but microtones are a fundamental part of Indian music. <laughs> Britney's Bollywood influence is just one of the many things that makes Toxic so memorable. Do you recognize this song? Sweater Brother is not like a lot of the songs we're used to in Western music. It's in the key of G minor, but the chorus doesn't give you a feeling of satisfying resolution when the G minor chord is played like most songs would. <laughs> G minor is bookended by these other tense chords, which doesn't allow the progression to resolve as much as we'd like it to. Or does it? What if the song is actually in B flat major? What if the chord progression is actually a 4 2 6 1? This tonal ambiguity adds to the sort of mysterious feel of the song. Pretty cool. Do you recognize this song? Give me Slow Dancing in the Dark puts a really interesting twist on a common chord progression. The good ol' 1, 6, 2, 5. The first three chords of the song are E flat major 7, C minor 7, and F minor 7. And typically the fourth chord would be a B flat major 7, but instead Joji follows the F minor 7 with a G minor 7 and a G major 7 with a flattened Freaking F sharp? G major isn't even in the key of the song! So instead of the progression sounding like this, it sounds like this. A tense, complex spin on a common chord progression. Really cool, Joji. Do you recognize this song? I'ma leave the well, I sure hope you do. It's really good. This song uses what's called a slash chord, which is a chord that's lowest note is different from the original. An example of a slash chord is G major over F. This means you play a G major chord, but with F as the lowest note. And this exact chord is used in the song. Oh, you got plans. You got plans. It adds a little tension without sacrificing the stability of G major. This is a great way to add depth to a chord progression, and it's just one of the many things that makes this song so amazing. Are you excited for their upcoming album? Do you recognize this song? Call me when you want, call me when you need. Of course you do. Lil Nas X is a freaking legend. There's only two main chords in the song. I caught it bad just today. You hear me with a call to your place. But it sounds like there's so much more going on. Why? Well, I'll tell ya. Lil Nas X is using different picking and strumming patterns. Picking is when you pluck the strings individually, and strumming is when you run up and down all the strings at the same time. The song starts out with long, drawn out strums. I caught it bad just today. Then moves to a sharp, short picking pattern. I don't even have to try. Cute to fuck with me this contrast makes the guitar feel like it's constantly changing, even if the chords stay the same. Really cool. Now look at this. The cool thing about Day and Night is that Kid Cudi doesn't sing the root note of the song until like a minute in. The song is in the key of B minor, but Kid Cudi bases the melody around the fifth note. In this case, that's F sharp. Now look at this. I think the first but surely finish last. We don't hear a B in the vocals until the first chorus. <laughs> By basing the melody around the fifth, Kid Cudi has created this unpredictable sound that is still in key. What's your favorite Kid Cudi song? Why is Levitating by Dua Lipa so good? You want me, I want you, baby. One reason is that the bass line uses a technique called octave jumping. This is when you play a note on the bass and then quickly follow it with the same note but at a higher pitch. <laughs> is pretty much the most consonant interval in Western music, which basically means it sounds really good. Music is just air wiggling at different speeds. And what's cool about the octave is that this note wiggles at exactly twice the speed of this note. This makes the ratio between these notes two to one. And the simpler the ratio is between two notes in music, the more satisfying the harmony will sound. The bass line's octave jumping technique adds a more complex rhythm and satisfying melody to the song. Pretty cool. <laughs> 